it sit for a month. Let your bike sit for a month, fire it up, and it spits out a quart of oil. Okay, You're going to say, what the Sam Hill is going on? You got to read his comment right here. See, I didn't reply back, so now he's bothering me in person. Yeah. So there's a stupid comment there about his bike. He's using oil, no problem, there's a problem, there's not problem, there's a problem. Then the Sportster came into view. I don't know where the Sportster came from, but anyway, it's an FXR Evo 80-inch motor. Otherwise, no, it's just a Harley. So you have to read that, so we're done reading that. So what was your problem? You're puking oil. Well, yeah, if the bike sits for three weeks, why is it spitting Ride your out bike more often and do that. of oil? Out of the breather. Okay, so we're gonna go over here. There, you have to follow me. Oh, we're going into the dungeon back here. It appears to be dark back here. Somebody didn't pay the light bill. Get lost back here. Somebody didn't pay the light bill. Oh, we got light. Back up. Get out of my way. What are you back here for? This is top secret area back here. Did you read that sign? Did you read that sign? Raised in the city. Okay, there you go. All right, here is a, that's not the right box. Um, it might be the right box. It probably is the right box. It just looks heavy. Oh, it is an oil pump. There. Jesus Christ. If that drops on your foot, it might hurt. Okay, yeah. what are these? These are tubes, push these, tubes. These are oil pumps. Yeah, well, that is, yeah. That's oil pump. You got some kind of fungi going on in hands down there. I don't no, want to I do I've been okay. working on a lawnmower. Okay, this is an oil pump. This is a 72 uh, no-seal oil pump. That means it's a wheel, one-year-only piece of crap hardly made. Oh, we don't like that one. Here's a chrome plate. Do you like the chrome ones? This oh, is that's early beautiful. One. See, it's got a small, big cap on it. That's an early one. That's a shovel part. And if you get one that looks like this, that's an Evo-style pump. So, if you pull out one of these, oh, there's an SNS looking piece of crap there. I bet you that's an SNS pump. Okay, there's a fancy one. You know what this pump and this pump is? Price. Not very much, because they're the same damn thing. <clears throat> Price. It's just a matter of all these pumps are all very similar how they work, so it doesn't really matter what year you got. And yes, I am scratching up all my gas the surface because I don't care. All right, so here's an oil pump. Yes, oil pump. This is called uh, small gear. Big gear. Big gear. Okay, the light's not on. Oh, geez, now I can see. Okay, so big gear is called return pump. My gear because it has a bigger gear in it. Pump gear has smaller gear, yeah. Pressure now, you know why it's smaller <clears throat> for pressure spins. Well, it doesn't matter, it has big gear spin too. The difference is, is the return side has to pump back all the oil that this gear put in, plus a lot of air, so it has to be more volume. Otherwise, you have a wet something problem. What's wet something problems do? Puke on the ground, yeah. Okay, so. Now, when you look at your pump on your bike, it looks like kind of like this. There's usually a stupid cover on there that's kind of like that, unless it's a newer version, which has the smooth cover on it, which is 92. How does the uh, dry sump so become wet? You have something that looks like this on your vehicle. Yes, exactly. It has some oil lines out the top. 92, the oil lines come out the bottom, but same thing. When you take that part off, it's the same underneath. Now, you have two fittings up here on your pump. Two? Yes. You have a pressure release system, that's why it's really tall. There's a plunger that goes up and down there. Now if you look over here, there's, there's plunger, so you got a bunch of gears and other crap over here. And there's some fittings. Yeah, don't see no plungers though. So. Maybe we don't have any plungers. Sure we got some somewhere. But somewhere. We're not working see them right now. Anyway, there's a plunger, it goes up and down. Now, when you see the plunger in there, there's one in the bottom yeah. of the hole in there. Yes. So see that one inside that hole is a plunger. When yes. the plunger lifts up, guess what happens? The <laughs> oil comes shooting out of this hole and lubricates your motor. Good. Because see the oil goes up through here, up the yeah. back side. Into the pump. Goes out over here, comes into the case, pressurizes the gallery, and it dumps the pressure. Okay, so this is a pressure feed system. Okay, this one over here is the one that is a check valve so the oil tank doesn't drain into your pump. When it drains in the pump, it fills the pump up full of oil, comes out the holes, and goes through the rest of the bike. Goes through the hole, goes in your case, fills up your case full of oil. Then you have an oil problem it's called wet something. So this check valve in here is what does that. Now, if you want to know what a check valve looks like, there's a fitting that goes, there's a hole in there. A hole? Way down in there. See there's a round hole? That's yeah. Look in the camera. See how good is a plunger. See oh, yeah, 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 yes. See yes. how it looks like there's a plunger inside of the yes, pump right Yes, there now? is one. Okay, but see, there's no ball sitting there right now, but you can see the round area. 
that's a circle on the outside of the thread area down there. Yes. But that's way down there. That's way down just above the surface here. Okay, that is a uh, check ball goes on there and seals. Now, when there's any kind of a nick or a hair or a piece of fungi the hair. between the ball and that seat, it leaks. And when it leaks, guess what happens? It fills up the sump. It fills up the pump and goes in the motor and fills up the sump full of oil. Because you have how many quarts of oil in your oil tank? <clears throat> I'm not sure. I think there's it's probably an three. There's an FXR. It's about three. So three quarts of oil eventually will suck down through these holes, or not suck, but leak down through all these holes. Yeah, for that one month. Right, and then it fills up in your motor. You got three quarts of oil in your lower end, so the lower end is well lubricated when you go to start it. Oh, yeah, right out that breather. Now the way you fix this problem is, is I take a, uh, a ball bearing, I weld a piece of rod to it, and then I put lapping compound in, it, and then I rotate it with my fingers until I see a nice good seat down there. The problem is you don't want to put lapping compound and motors all together. Ever. Because then it goes in your motor and destroys it. Yes, quickly. And it will not look like this because that's El Chunko. Lapping compound's real smooth. It'll be big, so it won't work, but it'll be smooth. So I do this when I rebuild the motors. I lap the seats in. Now, after you lap the seat in, you have a, basically a bunch of lines going in a circle. And I take another ball, used one, put it in the pump, and I give it one or two taps with a steel hammer, lightly. And that will take the soft aluminum, it'll crush all the little line markings down, and it'll also spread it out and fit the diamond of the ball, so it gives a nice curve to it. Yeah. Then I put a brand new ball in it, and that usually stops the leakage issues. Now, you want to look there at the seat and make sure it's a nice gray seat all the way around when you're lapping it, before you bang it with the ball. Now, after you bang it with the ball, it should be a shiny surface all the way around, because the ball will burnish the surface. You know what the word burnish means? Yeah. Okay. That means it re my, changes the metal tone, looks nice and smooth, it fits the part. So that's how these things work. Well, that's uh, nice. Now, that's it's elementary. Oh. It's just elementary, my dear wife. Now you move over to a breather. Now here's a cam cover. So you notice it's a generator cam cover. But guess what? It's the same system with the generator, a cone motor, and an Evo. Now, if I look in a different box, I might have an Evo cover. So here's an Evo cover over here. The you, same thing. Do you notice they look the same? Yes, they're identical. Not quite, but close. <clears throat> this is called a breather chamber. If you go like that, they look almost the same. And this has a breather tube. Yes, tube. And this one here has a breather chamber and a breather tube. And see this cavity right here? Yeah, that's where the oil is. That's called a breather cavity. That is supposed to be dry. That's why there's a gasket that goes around it. Guess what happens when you got a bunch of oil in your motor? Yeah, it overflows and fills up. It goes up into the breather and then it goes down this tube and it fills up this whole orifice full of oil. So guess yes. what happens when you put air to it? It pumps it out. It blows it out the darn motor because it don't want it Yeah, a quart. Or whatever it wants to. So these things all have breather cavities. <clears throat> so that's what they do, they plug up full of oil. That's why they're going to pump oil out until they equalize. Now, Where's the equalize? breather tube that goes out? This tube goes inside of a case. Yeah, so it's on the other side of the case. Well, this, it takes two halves to make a hole. Okay, now we're going to have to go to a different area because, see, we're running out of parts over here. So now we got to go find a case laying around someplace convenient nearby that's not too far away. Is this not too far away? No, a couple feet. <clears throat> this one's heavy though, it's got a cylinder and that's got a box of crap. That's too much work. Too much work. We don't, we got cases everywhere, but not that one. We got some flywheels too. All right, we're gonna go find a case. You got a case laying around somewhere? Somewhere. All right. Oh, look at that, we got lights back here. It's cold back here. I'm steering all the way back. I'm gonna close my door so it's not so cold. Okay, here's a motor. Ew, there's a motor too. That does not have a breather in it. That's not a really Harley motor, that's a twin cam. <laughs> not a Harley motor. Okay, this is the left case. This is the right case. This has been polished. It's a show bike. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, see this cavity right here? I do see it. Does it look similar to the other part? Yes. Yes, that was full of oil. Okay, see this filled up full of oil in here? Yes. The two tubes go like that, so the air goes in, blows around, comes back up, goes back down that way. That's called oil separation. On these older motors, they actually had a screen that went in here that really doesn't do much, but it looks nice. Yes, On beautiful. the cone motors, they eliminate that screen because it doesn't really do anything. The two tubes make the air have to go in, make a U-turn, come back out. When you make that U-turn, the oil will tend to drop out. Now, you see that little hole right there? Where? Yes, that tiny, tiny nothing. Okay, that hole goes down to that bottom down there where you can't really see it. 
down inside there. I see it. Way down deep. <clears throat> I see it. Now when the breather valve closes, which we don't have a breather valve right nearby. Let me find a fine one because there's another panhandle that's sitting here. Oh, here's that screen. Look at that. I found that screen. See, that goes right there. And you see, that's supposed to separate the air, so it has to go through this little screen. Yes. Which is supposed to keep, Brilliant. The, supposed to keep the oil out. Well, it actually doesn't do anything. That's why they took it out. In 1970, they figured out they didn't need it no more after, from 36 to 70, they didn't, they used it, or 69, I should say. There's a breather right there. This is called a breather valve. Right, I've seen them. It, see how it goes open? Yeah, closed? I've seen them. That's why it's a valve. So that goes in a hole like that, it rotates with a cam. So what happens is that goes roundy, 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 roundy like this. And as this opens and closes, Big ass pistons right here going up and down, up and down. Up and down. Okay, well you got a small cavity down there and you got a big ass motor up here on the top. Now this one here is probably a hundred and something cubic inches because you know it's a twin cam. So what happens is when the pistons go down, there's a lot of pressure and it pressurizes your crankcase down here. And if you have any blow by, it puts even more pressure down there. Yeah, plenty. And if this valve is open, all that pressure blows out through here, over here, and through the whole system, and that's how it works. Now, when the pistons go the other direction, go up, guess what happens? It sucks vacuum. This valve will close, and now this is gonna draw a vacuum. Vacuum. And that vacuum goes to that hole right there, and it sucks the oil out of this chamber and puts it in the breather chamber. So next time it comes around and opens, guess what? There's oil inside that breather chamber, it goes, blows all over the motor. And that's what lubricates all your lifters and your cam gears and all that crap. <clears throat> These motors are done different because they have a different system, but it's still a breather. It's a new improved design. Yeah, it's just more splash everywhere, but yeah, it doesn't matter. So that's what this breather valve does. Now I like putting the reed valves in there because we're not depending on this thing to open and close in the correct position, which is called breather timing. A reed valve goes by a pressure differential. It's either got pressure or doesn't. That's why you got a mark right here. Yeah. A timing mark. Yeah, well, you actually used to go in there and cut the windows out. And and that's critical? The that timing mark's critical? Yeah, well, if you put a reed valve in there, it opens and closes whenever there's pressure. When it's neutral pressure, it doesn't do anything. When it's got positive pressure, it opens. When it's got negative pressure, it closes. There, so. That breather valve has to be timed properly? This one here, you got to time it correctly. Yeah. And if you don't time it, if you don't have that mark there lined up properly? Then it has what they call oil carryover. That means it keeps oil in the sump. Oh, so it's... Uh, yeah, it's called critical. Wet, it's called wet something. So, anyway, so this is what keeps this chamber dry. Because if the chamber is not dry, it's going to blow oil out the tube. Guess where this tube goes? Into the cam cover. Oh, you right mean the, the channel? It, it comes out the, here. Okay, okay. This is where that hose is. Well, on your bike, you have a hose here. On my bike, well, I got a real bike. You got a real bike? Well, well this is actually a late bike. This is '69. Or 68, what is it, 65 case. But My bike's FXR. On the earlier motors, they have a tube that goes across here and it lubricates the primary and lubricates the primary chain. That's how they did it. That's how this bike over here is done. See, it doesn't have a hole through here. No. It has a big hole out the other side. It comes across and lubricates your primary chain. Later bikes, they actually had an oil line on the top of the pump that did that. Oh well, it still works. So, this one here, being a shovel head generator motor, not a pan head. See, it's a shovel head, that's pan head, even though it looked the same. So, this one here has a breather hose that comes out here. Guess where that goes to? The breather hose yeah. to the back of the bike? It went over the back of the transmission and blew on top of the transmission sprocket. It lubricated the rear chain. Oh, okay. That's how the factory shovel head bikes were back in the day. They did up into the mid 70s. Are you filming this? Yes, we are. Are you catching any of this? Yeah, all of it. Yeah. Memory. He's got to watch this several times I'm, to catch all of this. I'm memorizing it. Yeah, I'm sure you are. I am. So, anyway, so that's how that works. So it blows across. Now, most people don't like it blowing on their chain because we use a modern chain with chain lube now. It doesn't make nearly that much mess. So we just want this to blow on the ground and we shut the oil flow off to here because it used to be you had a, a screw on the side of the pump to put more oil in the breather. So because you took too much oil out here, so they put oil back into the system to lubricate the chain. Otherwise, the chain didn't get enough oil. Okay. So we eliminate that by having the chain oil shut off. I'll remember that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure you will. So that's how that all flies. So the other thing you got to do is very important on a Harley is you have to make sure that your vent, which comes out of here, on, on real Harley motors, you have a vent hoop on every motor right here. See, that's not a real motor, so it doesn't have one. No. So it comes out of here. This goes up to your oil tank, which is up here someplace. And that equalizes the pressure between the gear case cover in here, 
because that's where the hole goes to. So this goes right through the case, see right there? Mm -hmm. Right down there. Yes. So the pressure in here in the oil tank is the same. So that means that the oil tank will now have equal pressure, so the oil will gravity feed back down to your pump so you don't run out of oil starvation. Mm -hmm. It also means when the oil goes back from the pump up to the tank, it's not under a positive pressure going up the tank either because the tank has the same pressure head above it as what the motor does. Now, if you blow your oil plug off your tank because you have a bad motor, the reason it's doing that is because you have hundreds of pounds of crankcase pressure because your rings suck, which means when every time the cylinder fires, blow by. you have blow by that Massive. goes down yeah. and, it, and it pressurizes your crankcase, and then the breather doesn't work correctly and, and you blow the tank off, cap off. So a lot of new uh, twin cams have that issue because they have a shitty venting system in these motors. It's like called almost non-existent. Wow. So when you have a motor that doesn't have a lot of blow-by, you don't have any problem with your oil tanks blowing caps off. And a lot of oiling issues go away too. Well, it's time to rebuild the unit. <clears throat> so. When you have the oil so cap pop this, off. That is how your basic system works. Now, everything you do these things, the motors that <coughs> give you more pressures and more returns and all that and bigger breather hoses, makes them run better because that means the crankcase is not under a pressure in here. So my problem is I need another oil pump. Now if you have the oil pressure sucked into your air cleaner, then that's how the 92 and later Evo motors are. Then all the oil instead of blowing the ground blows inside your motor which goes right inside the combustion chamber which causes detonation which puts holes in pistons. It also makes the pistons nice and oily and crappy like this. Whereas the old motors, you didn't have that oil it's in there. It's normal for the air cleaner to have a little bit of oil in it, blow by oil. That is not it. normal, but that's how Harleys run. But on these old bikes, the, the tube went to the ground, so we didn't care about the air cleaner. We liked the clean air cleaner. We didn't like an oil air cleaner. Well, that's what I'm saying. And we didn't care about the air breathing because it was, we need air. And we didn't care about oil in the dirt because the dirt was making dust, so having oil blow by on the ground was good. That's how those old bikes are. They dump oil on the <laughs> yeah, ground. Yeah, semi trucks are famous for that. Yeah, they dump oil on the ground and lubricate no. the ground so it doesn't make dust. Keeps the dust down. You, you, you don't have the asthma. Keeps the dust down. Yeah, it, has, it gets rid of asthma and stuff like that. So that's a plus. But you know, the EPA says no. But, oh well, that's them. All right. So there's how your basic oil system works on these bikes. So my problem is I need another oil pump on the FX. The problem is, is your check valve is leaking. You have about your oil level on the motor is about this high. Yeah, it is. Which means you have three quarts. It sat for a month and it pumped out. It so, spewed out a quart. So core. when you start the bike up, all of this stuff is well lubricated. Oh. And then it lubricates your foot also. It poured out like a garden hose. Yes, it works really good. The same thing happens on your nitrous bike when your rings don't work very well. Use nitrous. The, it pressurizes the whole system and the oil uh, the oil return line. Yeah, it goes crazy. I mean, the oil bre the breather line for the motor looks like an oil return line. There's so much oil coming out. Oh, yeah, that's the same problem I have. So you take the motor apart and you fix your rings. You know how you fix your rings on your blower motor? You take them and you stretch them apart and put tension back in and put the motor right back together. Now the that's rings, it? now they work. And then, <laughs> then you can make another pass, and you don't have to put any parts in. But you have to take the motor apart, and you make it because now that the oil system works correctly, because you won't have all this blow by. Because now the ring is actually working when you put yeah. the spring tension on it. Yes. Now most people say you're probably supposed to replace parts, but now you just have to fix them. So you know, I have a lot of experience with nitrous on Harley motors. So plenty. Those are how you fix those. Anyway, so that is how the oil system works. Now the breather hose on your bike. Needs to go someplace. Yeah, that's the big question. Now, on a Harley, a real Harley, you see it's a rigid frame, so we don't have any problem. Okay, so back in this area back there, there's a, you see how the, the case is broken back there? Yeah. So you come out of that hole back there. See that hole right there? That's a hole looking, right there. There's a hole right there. That's yeah. the breather. So you have a hose on that, and you come out of the bike, and you can either dump it right on the ground. Yeah. Which just air turbulates on the bike and oil goes everywhere. Or you take a hose and you run all the way back to the back of the frame and you shoot it out this direction. Okay, okay. And most hoses have a curve built into them. Yeah, if yeah. If you put the yeah, hose where yeah. it blows out, yeah. like a 45 degree Yeah, right under the out, exhaust pipe. Then it's underneath the exhaust pipe because the exhaust is up here. Okay, then okay, you, okay. When you're going down the road, the oil blows out to the right side, not, yeah. on, not on your tire. Yeah, yeah. Really. Now, if you're stupid, you just let it blow right there. It gets all over your tire, all over the bike, all over your leg, and everything else. Okay, okay. So you do okay. it differently. Now, when you have a swing arm bike, there's usually an exhaust That's pipe. That's what I have. There's usually an exhaust pipe down there. That's a good looking is. one, too. That's a screaming you, eagle. You tied the, uh, the hose to the bracket. Now, if you watch bikes I work on, you would see that. 
I do. I do watch. Now this bike over here, being a panhead, is supposed to have a breather hose coming through these things. Right there, that hole is right there. There's supposed to be a tube sticking through there. But see, you notice this has the belt drive in here. Belts don't like oil. <laughs> no, no, no. So we no. modify it, and we have the hose going down. There should be a hose down there somewhere. I can't see it. So we take, we take the elbow up there. We cut the thing off. We put this a hose. This is a forty-seven. On. This is a fifty-seven. Oh, sorry. It's a, so we put the um, the hose going straight down, and then we run it to the back of the bike someplace. Now, I don't know if it's on the bike yet. It might be. It might not be. I don't remember. No, it looks like there's a hose laying over here on the ground. Fifty-seven. See that hose right there? Yeah, I do. You see this plug in it? Yes. That's the venting. That's because it was leaking oil out of it. Now, if you plug it up like that, guess what it does in the motor? Uh, well, that's the problem I had is I had it pinched with the jack. The underneath. oil no longer comes out of the hose here. It Where'd comes. It, it comes out of every orifice there is on the motor that it can leak out of. So well, it was only for a couple seconds until so I noticed. That'd be it. sooner base gaskets, push rod covers, uh, cam covers. Yeah, wherever it can. Wherever 300, 400 pounds of pressure will evacuate from is where it's going to come out of. Now, this was probably leaking outside like that. Now, when I get the bike running, that won't be in there no more. And you take this hose and you just run it to the back of the bike. Yeah. And you just zip tie it over here somewhere like that. Yes. And you just let it blow on the ground. Now, if you blow yes. it over here on your tire like that, you're no, stupid. no, too slippery. So you want to blow out like this angle right here. Yes. And it would blow out. Now, I haven't Ooh. got my exhaust mounted on here yet, but there's going to be a bracket right here. It comes out here, and it's easier to attach it to. Okay. Well, I don't know why there's a cork in there. I'm assuming because it was leaking at some point. Now, this bike has been sitting for a year. At least. Uh, November a year ago. We're yeah. in February now. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, February. That's, so that's like a year and a quarter. So I'm not sure how much oil is inside the tank right now, how much is in this motor. But you notice there's not very much oil on the ground. On the no, rack, zero. Because I make a nice oil-tight motor. Now, there might be a whole gallon of oil inside that motor. I don't know because I'm not starting it right now. And you can't drain it out either. Now, you fire it up. Now, when I go to start the bike, guess what I'm going to do? Uh, not add oil, but check it. I'm going to put a pan underneath here to collect it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what happened to me, you know? I, it pumped out I know, a quart. I, I know what's going to happen. It's going to be coming out of there. Now, the oil pump here, if everything's set up really nice, this tank should be full right now. If the tank is empty, then we know it's all in the crankcase. But see, I got seals on the crank and everything else, so it's not leaking through. That's if you put oil in this to start with. Well, I had some oil in there. This had oil in it. Yes. I don't know if it's full, but it had oil in it. So the you'll have a recovery pan here. Yeah, I'll definitely have waiting. A pan under. I will always put a pan under a bike that's been sitting because I'm not stupid. So, <laughs> well, I'm learning. Okay? So like I said, I'm I don't learning. know. I don't know what, what, how much oil is in this motor or where it's at right now because I haven't run this bike yet for a while. So, yeah, antique drags, see the antique drags are coming up in another two or three months, so if I'm going to run this bike, I'm going to have to start working on it this year. So that means i got to work on the rest of this thing and finish it. And I was told by Alan I'm supposed to work on my own stuff this year, so. Really? That means I might actually work on my own bike. Yeah, that'd be a miracle. So, anyway, that's where the oil systems work. What is this bike here? That is a Sportster. I don't number. remember. Oh, that's the one you bought. That's that 99 Sportster I bought. Uh, 1200 for, custom. For sale. That has uh, 8,300 miles on it. Yeah, brand new. That I have not finished yet to sell it because I'm not really a major interest in. Uh, you did so much on this. You had this bike all polished and everything. I worked on that. And I'm, see, I've been taking care of the chrome. See, it's just sitting here. And you have that windshield too. So when I get some time to work on my projects around here, see, I have some extra time. Oh, plenty. Then I'll uh, I'll finish this bike up, and then maybe somebody will want to buy it. Otherwise, I'll have to ride it, which I don't really want to do. Because you know how long it'll last if I ride it? A uh, week. You'll give it that long? I'd rather ride this bike. This is a real Harley. I don't want this late model crap. Fifty-seven. I don't like late model bikes. That's the last year of a Harley. Yeah, fifty-seven. Yep. How big that headlight is because after that they went to a swing arm bike yeah. that must be the most uncomfortable handlebars they ever made that's a very comfortable bike like this with your wrist well when you it's got like your, a beach cruiser when you got your big ass up on the big seat up there oh, and you're sitting on yeah, like a real bike a beautiful bike. it's comfortable as hell having this must be an incredible bike. ride this is a very comfortable bike when you're riding now if you have a seat like this those bars suck because now it's the wrong angle 
Yeah. Because now your butt is six inches lower than it should be, and you're a little bit further back also. So now everything changes. And then you take off the footboards around this bike, and you put pegs on it way up in the front, and now your legs are way forward also, and that's com not very comfortable either. No. Unless you're 6'6", six, six, then it is comfortable. But short guys with short, fat legs like you. Me, yeah. Or me. Look at this right here. Well, that was for you. Fringe. Alan liked those. They call those fringes? Alan liked that. He thought that was a nice part. Reminds me of an Indian motorcycle. They have yeah, stuff like that. They, you know, the Harley guys did the same thing back in the day. It's it's kind of a frilly crap. Yeah. I'm uh no, now you ain't gonna be on my bike.